Hey, 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 this is Louis D. French bringing it to you on a Friday morning. I hope you're doing well. Today what we're going to talk about, we're going to be talking about uh, the FAFSA. This should be my last update for the school year, twenty uh, for this school year, 23-24. The FAFSA, um, you should be filling out now uh, for the school year 24-25. And uh, so you, uh, well, I'll show you what you're going to be using. Uh, I can't take, I t- can't take credit for this at all. Uh, this has to do with my um, with my assistant Lourdes. Her son is a senior in in high school, and uh, he's heading off to college. So she did this. So I'm getting firsthand information, and I'm not gonna lie. She texted me, and uh, so I took notes on her text. And so the, what, what I'm showing you, these are more tidbits on the FAFSA, firsthand from somebody who actually had been doing it and had a, had a vested interest in it. So let's go. Here we are, FAFSA updates 2024-2025. This will air on January Sunday, January 21st, 2024. Again, the reason I put these dates and I mentioned the dates because you may be watching this 2034, 2044. Things change. So please pay attention to the year in which you are watching this and uh, use Google as your best friend or whatever is the, the, the ooh-la-la search engine of the year because uh, that's what you want to be doing this is just an update for this particular school year. Oh, before I go on to my next slide, the FAFSA again update translates the into FAFSA translates into student aid and is the very foundation of getting student aid, and so that's why I am doing this. And uh, it's good for everything, so it's it's important that you you do the FAFSA so that you can get financial aid, so you can go to college. All right, the first thing that was told to me by my assistant, Lourdes, was you should Google the uh, the college codes used for FAFSA. And I'm going to show you an example, again, using Google uh, as your best friend uh, here in uh, Miami, Florida, because uh, you want to have those handy. You don't want to be scratching around, looking around for them. And let me, and she made a really good point. So let me just show you uh, what I found. I'm just going to show you real quick before I show it to you. What I did was I went on Google, even though it says search the web or whatever, I went to Google and I used the search engine. And then what I did is when I when the thing popped up here, I started and I used my toolbar, which is here, and I saved it way down here. And these are the three things I'm going to use in this video. And I saved it. And that's not a bad idea. You remember, you could always delete these. You don't have to, you don't have to keep these things. You can delete them, but for you know, for the purpose of what you need, it's good to have them handy. And so that's what I did. I starred them so this way I could access them easily. And that should be a good idea for you too. While you're filling out the FAFSA, so you don't have to look around and where did I put it? So it's easy access. So as I did, as I told you, I had them all set up here. This is the one we're using right now. I use this because this is the most, prob- truthfully, the most popular, most populated school here in in, uh, in the 305, as it were, uh, the Miami-Dade uh, County and uh, Miami-Dade College, MDC, FAFSA school codes. And these are all the campuses that are here on in, uh, in Miami-Dade. And you'll see that there are different codes, federal codes for each particular campus and so it's good to have them handy so this way when you're filling out the FAFSA you're ready to rock and roll other tidbit update for tw- for the FAFSA for this uh for this school year 2024 2025 is to have your 2022 taxes ready but what? what what I don't understand remember people right now this is January end of January 2024 people are gathering their tax information for 2023 and this is tax season between now and this is the United States of America we're talking about now uh this tax season is roughly right now January in through the middle of April so people are gathering their taxes and whatever and FAFSA realizes that so they're going to use your taxes for the previous year which is not 2023 but rather 2022 so make sure you have them ready make sure you have them accessible and uh, FAFSA makes it easy and all you have to do again Google where to find my tour my 2020-22 tax information for the school year 2024-2025 so let me show you again I like to make this as authentic as possible I googled it I saved it up here in the toolbar here again this is straight from FAFSA you see here and again official website of the United States government you can't beat that FAFSA forms or you know everything is here where to find my tax information you remember you see 2022 
for the school year 2024-2025. It gives you all kinds of, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, but obviously, because it's your stuff, it's your personal stuff. Usually most people have a 1040. This is here in the United States for the tax returns. And it shows you the different things that you will need. And they even highlight it here to make your life a little easier. So you know what you're going to be looking for. You see here, everything highlighted. So therefore, you don't have to go, wow, what, what am I doing? Wow, wow, wow. And, you know, in case these are the things they should be asking you or, or, or referring to when you're filling out the, the FAFSA. So, uh, so it's really important to, to pay attention to, to these things. And so if you want to write this down, write it down, studentaid.gov. Uh, and again, I Googled, literally Googled that if you want to write that down, where to find my tax information 2022 20, uh, for 2024, 2025. And it gives you instructions on what you need to do. So I think that's very important and very handy for you to have. Other thing that uh, Lourdes told me that uh, would be important for, for us to, for you to have for the FAFSA is your social security number. I, I know this is, this is a, a thorn in my side when I'm filling out these things with my volunteer school because for some reason, nobody really knows, seems to know their social security number. Do yourself a favor, not me a favor, yourself a favor. Learn your social security number the way, uh, I, I know it sounds silly, but the way you know how to spell your first name and your last name. It should literally be, be part of who you are. And so make sure that you have access to your social security number. And again, I'm talking about the United States of America. The United States of America has these things called social security numbers, which is truly like a, a fingerprint. It's really, it gives, it's your identity here in the United States. And it's exactly that four numbers and two numbers and four numbers. And is that true? Yeah. I was thinking about my own. Yes. And so, and make sure you don't share your social security number because it really is your fingerprint. You don't want people stealing your identity. And if you need to put it on your phone, which you shouldn't, but if you need to put it on your phone or your mom, your dad's in your phone, uh, make sure when you're done with it, that you delete it because like delete it, delete it because you, you don't want that out there. Um, because people, people can, can really steal things from the, from the dark web as it were. So make sure that you have those ready to use. Other thing that you should have av uh, available is your investments. I know some some people may not have any investments like 401k stocks. You may not have a uh, an investment home. You may you may not have uh, you may not have any property. Some people have businesses. Some people have farms. Some people have uh, whatever it is an online business. Uh, things of that nature, whatever those amounts are, the, the net worth, as it were, that is going to make your, 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 your total value of what you have. It may not be money, money, but it may be a house. It may be a farm. It may be something like that. And those things, they count that towards how much money you actually have. So make sure that you have those investments ready to go when you're filling out the FAFSA, because they will ask you what kind of investments, if any, you may have now here's another tricky thing in terms of banks um uh, make sure that you have them ready and add it up uh they could be your i'm talking about the student now it may be your personal bank account it may be one that you may share with your parents which is which is totally possible or the parent may share with a a parent of their own so in other words it could be you and grandma or it could be your parent and their mom or their dad all those bank accounts, you may say, but, but, but yeah, no, anything that's in your name, whether it be you, the student, or whether it be you, the parent, all those things are go into account. And I thought that was very interesting that Lourdes mentioned that to me because uh, she wrote that specifically, you, your parents, bank accounts that you share with others. I thought that was really interesting because I, I didn't even really think about that, to be honest. I thought about you, the student, you, the parent. I didn't think about bank accounts that you share with others. So that that is important that you have those readily available to you. And the last thing that Lourdes had mentioned to me while doing this, and um, yeah, and, and I know I've, I've harped on this a number of times, but it's always good to remember before you even think of starting this. Make sure that you have an that you create an FSA ID. FSA ID. That truly is your identification card for the FAFSA. What it is, it really is, is and I'll show you in a second. It's, it's your name, your address, your phone number, and all that stuff. Instead of putting your name, your address, your phone number, blah, 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 it's really, it's just instead of putting all that, your identification card, your FSA ID is the one that's going to be your ticket to get rolling into into the FAFSA. It's going to, it really is going to be your identification card. 
And again, this is my last little thing here. Again, being authentic as possible. If you want to write it down, write it down. You see more official government sites. We're talking about the United States of, of America here. Studentaid.gov. If you want to write it down, take a picture, screenshot, whatever you want to do uh, for the fast for creating an account, how to get started. It'll just click on it so you can see what I'm talking about. Getting started, you see literally it's asking for your name. My hand doesn't shake as much, that's great. Fast na first name, last name, your date of birth, uh, and to confirm, but and your social security, there, there's the importance of having the social security. Really, really important that you uh, have do this, get this ready, and this is also filled out one more time for you and your parent, one more time. You and the parent. So I, you, you can't necessarily, well, I, I did it. And you need to have all that ready. All these things, and I think this is what Lourdes, well, let me finish here. This is what Lourdes was harping on to have all those things that I just shared with you. The FSA ID, the, I'm looking at the, at the FAFSA codes for the schools, uh, your tax information, your social security, your, your assets, whether your investments, your bank accounts, have that all like all laid out, you know, like get, have it ready. It's almost, it's almost, you know, like you're starting your day, you know, you're putting on your shirt, you're putting on your pants, your skirt, your, your, your shoes, whatever it is, your hat, everything, have it all laid out, ready to rock and roll. And so when you have all that laid out, ready to rock and roll, as Lourdes illustrated, and that's what I put on this canvas slide, it really shouldn't take you long at all. Uh, it should take you, I, I would say max a half hour, max. Uh, and you should get, again, if you look back on my archives, the SAI, which will give you that, that what you, what, what you are, are, uh, entitled to by the federal government here in the United States. And it's also really important because I know I, I started this last time and I'm going to do it again on, uh, on Tuesday at my volunteer school in the evening. Uh, they say, well, th there was, there was a negative number. A negative number is good. It means that you really can't afford to go to college. So therefore they're going to give you, uh, give you money. And I know one of the parents was saying, because they said there's a grant, one of them finished it and said there was a grant for, I don't know, it was like 7,000 something dollars, US dollars. And she was like, oh, what is this grant, grant? And what I was telling her is that that's free money. Grant is, equi is equivalent to free money. So I, I want you to make sure that, that you see all those, those, those little tidbits of information. Uh, you could always email me, lou.deshap, L-O-U-D-E-S-C-H-A-P at gmail.com. That's my uh, social media email. Uh, you have questions. I mean, uh, that's why I'm here. You know, I, I do it with love. And uh, so that's all I got. And uh, hopefully everything will go well with the FAFSA. It, uh, you won't hear about FAFSA again from me until next school year. Uh, but if, but you never know. Some, sometimes something may happen. So I, I may do something. Uh, next college stuff, I'm going to start start a little start doing. Um, what do you call those things? Summer programs, because it is that time of the year that we should start looking at summer programs. This is Louis D. Fresh.